Hello, and welcome to the Paul Green Comedy Podcast. This is for August 7th, 2024. Episode 250. Static comedian, actor, and improviser, and dreamer, Paul Green, coming to you. And talking through my journey as a performer and sharing whatever little tidbits of wisdom I come across as I do so. 250 episodes. Every time I hit another 10 episodes, it always feels good. So, I am getting ready for three nights, three shows in a row. So tonight I will be performing in Gilbert, Arizona at the Incredible JP's Comedy Club with my comedy partner, the one and only Josh Novi. So, um, very much looking forward to uh, tonight's show. Uh, JP's has been a huge blessing being able to perform at the club and... It was really his club who was the first, um, uh, like first booker to give the Midlife Crisis comedy show a stage and for us to try it out and see if this crazy idea has any legs. So, um, this will now be our, our fourth show, I think, at, uh, at JP's. Maybe our fifth. So that'll be fun. And then Friday and Saturday, I will be heading down to Tucson, Arizona. So I got to tell you something. I don't understand why it is impossible to do a car repair and just have it go well. (laughs) And just have it go as expected. So, um, (sighs) should I tell this story? Should I tell the story, everybody? So, Unfortunately, my um, mother's um, AC in her car um, went out, wasn't working. And anybody who lives in Arizona in the summer, if you do not have AC in your car, it is death. We have been reaching triple digit temperatures since like April. Record high heat. Multiple days in a row. <sighs> so my little brother had taken the car to an AC tech. They narrowed it down and swore up and down that the problem was the EVAP core. And then they said, and that's going to cost you $2,000. Which is too much. So... My little brother finds an EVAP core online for like a hundred bucks. And he's like, hey, I'm handy. My brother's handy. We'll just install this ourselves. How hard can it be? So, evidently, you're supposed to remove the entire dashboard to get to the EVAP core. Which is why the repair shop wanted so much money. And um, what ended up happening is my little brother, he finds this YouTube video where a guy found a way to replace the EVAP core without having to remove the entire dashboard. Still had to remove a bunch of stuff like the glove box And, you know, unscrew a bunch of plastic, uh, I don't know, just 
a bunch of car parts <laughs> in the way of what we needed to get done. But definitely a heck of a lot easier than removing the entire dashboard. So, we have the EVAP core. I go and I get my mom's car. I go to my brother's house. We hang out in the garage. We start um, unscrewing and unbolting. And uh, we get the EVAP core to the old one. We try to pull it out. And turns out there's this little tiny sensor that's like a little metal... Um, yeah, I don't even know how to describe it. Kind of like a small golf tee, but like metal, and has two wires coming out of it, and then those two wires connect to some switch in the car, obviously. And this is all behind the dashboard. We're operating behind the dashboard because we uh, didn't take it out. And when we pulled out the old EVAP core, that little sensor, um, we ended up pretty much snapping the, these two little wires. And they were really small, small gauge wire. And we're like, oh, geez, here we go. So we pull out the old EVAP core. We now have a broken sensor. We look at the EVAP core that my brother bought online. Turns out it's the wrong one. So now we take our first trip to O. O'Reilly's Auto Parts. And they don't have the EVAP core that we need in stock. But their bigger location, that's like 30 minutes away, does. So then we drive to the other O'Reilly's. We get the correct EVAP core. And then we say, hey, and what about this little sensor thing? And nobody in O'Reilly's could track down on their computer system, what this sensor was. It's like they were typing in every sort of name that they could think of. Try to find this sensor that we had now snapped in half. <sighs> and they couldn't find it. So we're like, great. So we at least get the correct EVAP core. We go back to the garage, and now we have this snapped um, wire and what we do is we're able to take the whole sensor out and then we try to solder the wires back together. The problem is the we had snapped the wires so close to the edge we had like like less than a millimeter of wire length to try to solder to on one side and we try to do it, and by we, I mean my little brother. And by little, I mean younger brother. He ain't so little. And, um, but he's able to do it. But we're just kind of worried because, you know, it's it's a little weak. It's harder to solder wire together as it is, and we don't have that much room. <sighs> but anyway... We get the new EVAP core, and now we're trying to route this little sensor that now has very weakly soldered together wires. And what ends up happening, of course, the solder doesn't hold. We try to put the new EVAP core in. The sensor, you know, detaches again. And then we're just thinking, well, maybe we don't really need that sensor. <laughs> hey, maybe the thing will just run so we put back in the evap core we leave the sensor alone we recharge the ac system turn the car on and out of the vents hot dry air 
Um, not one degree cooler. <sighs> so, we just figure, all right, I guess this sensor actually is very important. At least we we just hope it's the sensor. We still don't know. It could It could be something else. So then we go back online and we have to like dig deep in the internets to finally track down where the sensor is, the sensor that no O'Reilly Auto Parts could find. And we finally do find it. Of course, it's like 60 bucks for like two little pieces of wire in this little metal piece. It's ridiculous. So we order it, but it's going to take a week to get here. And so we have to return a half um, what I say, well, we didn't put everything back because we know we're just going to have to rip it all out again. So we returned the car to my mom, not even all the way put back together with our tail between our legs and a broken AC EVAP cooler sensor snapped in half. And it's frustrating. Now... Why do I share this story? Mostly because I need content. Secondly, because if there's anything that I have discovered and realized in pursuing comedy, pursuing acting, is, my gosh, there are just so many days that just do not work out the way that you had hoped. And just so many discouraging setbacks and frustrations. And, you know, you're thinking whatever it is you're pursuing is going to be smooth sailing and everything's just going to line up and work out perfectly the first time. I can definitely say that has not been my experience, not as a dreamer or in so many different elements of life. So, then it really just comes down to, so what of it? How do you respond? How do you react? How do you move forward? And to me, the crucial element will always be the attitude and perseverance that you display in the face of things not going well. Because just throwing the hands up and going, you want to know what? This is too hard, or that was too discouraging, or there's just no way this is going to work out, so I am just going to quit and forget about it always an option. And and I'm not even suggesting that maybe there are times where that option should be exercised. If you just get to a point to where you you ain't having it anymore and, you know, you just feel like you'd rather be putting your time and effort in other things, sure. However, If you have a dream, if you have a goal, if you have an ambition and something that you know is your calling or you know it's in your heart, you know it is um I don't know, you just know. You just know deep down in a in a place. Uh I can say you can definitely anticipate that sometimes you think it's going to go one way and you're going to end up with a uh, couple broken wires and an EVAP core hanging out of a uh, <laughs> hanging out of a dashboard that has a glove box that has been uh, unscrewed and is sitting in your truck. And that maybe the repair that you thought would take two hours ends up taking a week and a half. This is all a overly 
cheesy and inflated metaphor. But all I got to say is, uh, if whatever your dream is, if you have found yourself with a couple broken wires and a dashboard half torn apart, I hear that, and I see that, and I feel that. And I just got to say, if you know it's what you want to be doing with your life, just keep moving forward. And uh, who knows? Maybe the uh, the part you need is just a week away that will <laughs> make it all worth it. And uh, soon you'll have AC blasting out of your vents again. So I'll let you know how this ana- how this analogy plays out in about a week, and hopefully the analogy uh, works out. Otherwise, I'm going to have to uh, do another analogy a week from now, how uh, even after you get the new AC sensor and you install it, sometimes it still doesn't work, at which point you need to take your dream to an actual certified auto mechanic and then just let them uh, fulfill your dreams for you. It's just going to cost you um, $2,000. All right. I'm getting facetious here. So, anyway, keep at it, everybody. Keep at it. I don't know why the world is the way it is. I don't know why life is the way it is. I don't know why it doesn't ever really seem for things to just, to just, like, work out swimmingly the first time all the time. I don't know. That is not my... Uh, question to answer. So, with that, let's shift gears a little bit. Speaking of things not working out, sometimes, or at least not in the immediate short term, I have been reporting on The 48 Laws of Power by Robert Greene, and each day discussing one of the laws that he espouses in his book, and just giving my analysis on what I think of those laws or how I am uh, how I feel about them. As I found find most of the laws to be um, quite devious, actually, and maybe even downright evil, in my humble opinion. Today's law is to play upon people's fantasies. Or in other words, to preach fantasy as a way to trick people into uh, following you and to giving you homage. And then, you know, by the time you've gone to power and you actually need to deliver on these fantasies, um, you know, it's too late because uh, you'll already be in power and now it'll be too late for them to, you know... uh, to do anything about it. So do I even really need to explain how despicable I find this law to be? And it's similar, I have a just similar feeling towards this law as I do about a lot of the other laws, which is I I just don't really feel that being intentionally deceptive is... Um, is an effective strategy if happiness and fulfillment and peace is your aim. Now, again, if absolute power at all costs and you don't care who you hurt or how many victims are in your wake, then, yeah, purposely manipulating people with fantasies or playing into their desire to not confront reality, obviously a very effective tool. I mean, it's pretty much every advertisement to some degree not every advertisement but most of them um, seem to have this sort of deceptive element buy our product and next thing you know you will be playing volleyball with your shirt off and a six pack six pack abs on the beach all you have to do is drink our alcohol so you know I get that I, I get the playing into people's fantasies but again you know if 
if what you're selling is really that destructive and the only way to actually move the product is, is through deception, I just, it's just so hard for me to fathom that that is <laughs> what, what people would choose to do with their life. But then again, you know, if, if I'm going to uh, use alcohol as my example of, you know, a company that uses uh, fantasy in their advertising to to sell their product, obviously there is a tremendous amount of money to be made. And um, can't really fault people for uh, recognizing that there's a tremendous amount of money to be made and going and doing it. I get it. Um, so is this an effective strategy for gaining power? Is it something that is exercised fairly regularly? Is it common? Absolutely. Does that necessarily mean that I am interested in gaining power in that same manner? And yeah, not really. Um, yeah, not, not really. Hopefully there is such a thing as offering a product to the market that actually just does what it says it's going to do and does so in a manner that is also genuinely helpful to human beings instead of, um, downright destructive so much so that the only way to sell the product is through, uh, falsification of some fantasy outcome <laughs> for use in the product so so you know everybody I am a big fan I, you know as much as I am a dreamer I'm also a big fan of just looking at reality as realistically look at reality realistically I'm a big fan of redundancy uh, look at reality as honestly and blatantly as possible and going all right this as much as I can tell, is the truth about my situation. I'm in this situation. I'm in, you know, this type of career. I'm in these types of relationships. I'm having these types of experiences on an everyday basis. And just be completely honest about the good and the bad. This is really good. This is really bad. Um, and to me, having a dream is not about a fantasy it may feel that way sometimes because obviously if you're dreaming about something it's because it is not your everyday reality which is really what the whole idea of having a dream is in the first place is this is my current reality there's something that I'm seeking or an experience that I'm seeking or an opportunity that I'm seeking or a feeling that I'm seeking and I'm not experiencing that in today's reality, so I need to have a dream to have a target, have something to aim towards. And sometimes that dream may feel somewhat um, like a fantasy, especially if, if the dream, you know, is maybe very extreme and... I got to tell you what, as much as I am all about going for dreams and going for big things in life, I am also fully aware that there is such things as impossibilities. And there is such thing as dreams that um, are, are objectively impossible, <laughs> you know, which may seem a little counterintuitive to my whole philosophy. But the whole, like, anything is possible. Like, yeah, not really. And I think about this analogy all the time. It's like, well, you know, I'm a 43-year-old, you know, reasonably athletically talented man. But if my dream at age 43 was, you want to know what? I want to become an NFL quarterback. Um, Like, that is genuinely impossible. <laughs> you know. Tom Brady's a few years older than me, and he can't even be an NFL quarterback anymore. So me try to be an NFL quarterback, like actually, like is legitimately impossible. And I don't even really want to try to argue that philosophically. So 
to me, the whole concept of having a dream is actually dreaming something that is actually somewhat realistic. Now, it doesn't mean, uh, and when I mean realistic, I mean um, has the possibility of actually being obtained in real time with linear time theory, something that with very consistent effort and focus and um yeah what else is there effort and focus and putting resource and time and energy towards could actually realistically be achieved within a lifetime and i'm i'm not a big fan of living in fantasy land you know if you're a singer songwriter and your goal is i am going to be as successful as taylor swift hey i love the idea that you want to be a professional singer songwriter performer music producer or whatever um but if your dream is i need to be as successful and famous as taylor swift and anything else is not accomplishing my dream. And, you know, now I don't know who you are. Maybe you're the type of person where that actually is not an, a, a complete impossibility. Um, so, what do I mean by all of this? I do think that there is an element of pragmatism to having a dream. And... To me, sometimes having a dream that is so, really is fantasy, really is just like an impossibility, to me is actually a, it's kind of a cop-out. It's almost a way to say, oh, well, you see, dreams don't come true because um, I had a dream that I was going to start the next Amazon and, uh, you know, I tried to start a company and after a couple of years, it wasn't worth a billion dollars and it didn't become the most successful e-commerce uh, yeah, uh, sales platform ever. See, dreams don't come true. It's kind of like, yeah, OK. Using fantasy as as an excuse to not actually go after something that maybe actually could happen. I think is a bit of a cop-out. So, what does all this mean? Why am I bringing this, all this up? So, playing into people's fantasies, not a big fan of that. I'm all about living in reality, being as pragmatic as you can, being as realistic with, this is my situation, This, these are my actual assets, these are my actual liabilities, these are my resources, these are the options that I have available to me. I also have a strong desire and a strong dream to experience a, this certain type of life or these certain types of experiences. They are not my current reality. However, I do see how they could become my reality. In linear time theory in this lifetime, and I'm not being so unrealistically... Um, audacious. I'm I'm not trying to just say, well, my only dream is if I am a multi-billion dollar pop star or an NFL quarterback. <laughs> it's uh, no, it's something that. Um, and again, by the way, there may be somebody listening to this who being becoming an NFL quarterback actually is not unreasonable. Still highly difficult, highly challenging. You know, like if you're a 15-year-old um, athlete right now, that that actually may be a dream that's worth going for. If you're a 16-year-old singer-songwriter, <laughs> you know, and uh, you're ready to move to Nashville and give it a shot, I say go for it. If you're, you know, uh, an, you know an actress or whatever it is, like go for it. So... 
I don't want to sound discouraging. I always want to be encouraging, but I just do really feel that sometimes declaring a dream that actually is impossible for your current life trajectory, not a fan of that. Because I do think that that can somehow, again, be an excuse, be a way to um, cop out of actually trying something that could happen in your lifetime. And that I'm all for. All right, everybody. I got very philosophical at the end there. But I do think that that is very important to look at reality and then see how you can shift your reality in real time and see what sort of different outcome you can create for yourself through consistent effort, through consistent work, while also understanding that while you're going for something, it may not always work out (laughs) on the timeline that you were hoping for and that you might end up with some frustrating uh, setbacks such as severing a couple wires on an air conditioner sensor in your EVAP core in your mother's Nissan Versa. All right, everybody, whatever is going on in your life, I love you. I encourage you and uh, hope that you are finding joy and perseverance through the experiences that you are going through. All right, everybody. That is going to be all for today. This is the Paul Green Comedy Podcast for August 7th, 2024, episode 250. I love you all so much, and I will check in with you tomorrow.